If you watch this video, then you will understand logic. This statement is an example of conditional statements. And that's what we're going to talk about today in geometry. I'm your teacher, Mr. Peacock. But before we can talk about conditional statements, we first have to understand what makes something true and what makes something false. So we're going to talk about true-false logic. So in true-false logic, the basic concept is a statement is true if and only if it is true for every case. And because of that, a statement is false if it is false at least once. So something could be true 4 billion times. And if there is one example where it is not true, it is considered false. So let's look at some statements and decide if they are true or false. Our first one here is birds fly. And if you look at this majestic eagle, you and I both know in our heart of hearts that the answer is false. That's right, it's false because there are birds that don't fly. For instance, penguins. So now let's try another one. This one says a rectangle has four right angles. Now, if you don't remember, the definition of a rectangle is it is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles. And all four angles to be congruent have to be 90 degrees or right angles. Therefore, by definition, a rectangle does have four right angles. Next, fish live in lakes and streams. If we look here, we see some beautiful fish in a stream going upstream against the, against the flow. And as we all know, this answer, though, has to be false, because there are fish that live in other areas, such as the ocean, like Nemo, and so many others. All right, here's our next one. Athletes play football. Now, when I see athletes play football, I know in the state of Texas, everyone believes that the only sport that matters is football. But I am not talking about the state of Texas. I am talking about, in general, athletes play football would be false. Now you might be like, but Mr. Peacock, athletes do play football. And some athletes do. But there are also athletes that play other sports. Sports like badminton and curling and Quidditch. Hey, can, can someone give me an example? What's a sport? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. No, I've already said football. Hockey. Uh, some athletes play hockey. Moving on. All right. Austin, Texas is the capital of Texas. In this case, this statement, despite what many people, especially in West Texas, want to believe, is true. Austin is the capital of Texas. All right, so now that we've done that, let's talk about some conditional statements. So a conditional statement is one like this. If I get paid today, then I will take you to the movies. By the way, this statement right here is false because I'm not taking you to the movies even if I get paid today. So. Let's look at the statement again. If I get paid today, then I will take you to the movies. The if statement, I get paid today, is the hypothesis. The then statement, I will take you to the movies, would be the conclusion. So a conditional statement has a hypothesis and a conclusion. And we use these to create things. But the first thing we need to understand is this. A conditional is false if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. So here's our original conditional statement. If P, then Q. This is just a generic one to show you the basic rule. So if I get paid today, then I will take you to the movies. Our first thing that we can do is we can just switch the order. So instead of if P then Q, it's now if Q then P. We call that the converse. So what we do here is instead of if I get paid today, then I will take you to the movies, 
it suddenly becomes, if I take you to the movies, then I get paid today. All right, inverse. With the inverse, instead of switching the order, we keep the original order, but we make them both negatives. So instead of if P, then Q, it's if not P, then not Q. If I don't get paid today, then I won't take you to the movies. Next, contrapositive. Contrapositive is going to be where we both do the converse, so we switch the order and we do the inverse. So instead of if P, then Q, it's if not Q, then not P. If I don't take you to the movies, then I didn't get paid today. All right. So now that we've looked at that, let's look at an example statement. And we're going to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive and say whether or not each one is true or false. If you play football, then you are an athlete. Well, as we've already established, if you play football, you know what, actually, if you're playing football, I will consider you an athlete. That is true. But the converse is where we switch the order. So if you're an athlete, then you play football. Suddenly, this isn't true because you could be an athlete and play one of the other sports, like um, basketball. That's a game you could play, so this is false. Inverse, remember, we take the original statement, but we make it negative. If you do not play football, then you are not an athlete. Do you notice that the converse and inverse actually seem to be saying the same basic thing? So this one would be false as well, because you could be playing basis ball instead. So false as well. Now we finally have contrapositive. Remember, we switch the order and we make it negative. So if you are not an athlete, then you do not play football. That, wants it, that because if you're not an athlete, you're not going to be a football player, because we've already established if you do play football, you are an athlete. So this has to be true. So notice, the conditional and the contrapositive have, have truth values that are the same, and the converse and the inverse have truth values that are the same. All right, let's quickly talk about biconditional statements. If a statement and its converse are both true, then the statement is biconditional. So this would be one where all those four would end up being true. So we can connect the hypothesis and conclusion in biconditional statements by using the phrase if and only if. We could rewrite the first bullet point as a statement and its converse are both true if and only if the statement is biconditional. So that is how we write a biconditional statement. Notice we don't have the if then. It's now just one part, if and only if, the second part. All right, and that's it. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe and, you know, smash that no that bell.